Everyone knows the Coast Guard is involved in search and rescue, drug enforcement, and illegal migrant interdiction. And we've also seen how they assist in oil spill cleanup and fighting fire at sea. But did you know that the Coast Guard also handles water-based security for a number of high-profile events, including the space shuttle? Of course, the first flight of the shuttle, uh, of the shuttle Columbia, was back in April 1981. And uh, of course, the shuttle is the primary access to space for humans. During shuttle launches, the uh, Coast Guard uh, provides security and um, makes sure that uh, the water area uh, downrange of our launch pads are uh, free of uh, boats and people so that they don't uh, endanger themselves inadvertently. The shuttle is different than previous NASA programs in that the shuttle orbiter can be flown again and again. Similar to its predecessor, however, is its use of the Apollo launch facilities at Cape Canaveral, including the launch pads which are right on the central Florida coast, posing a potential danger to any ships or pleasure crafts that might be in the area. Obviously, uh, we have a uh, shuttle taking off here with about six and a half million pounds of thrust, and there's a lot of high energy propellants there. Should we have any kind of a mishap, uh, we wouldn't want people to be in the danger area below the flight path. And of course, the solid rockets come off after about two minutes and fall into the ocean, so we wouldn't want a ship to be in uh, that particular area. The Coast Guard provides the necessary support to NASA and the Air Force from their station located at Cape Canaveral. Station Port Canaveral is, uh, is somewhat a typical small boat station is set up the same with a very peculiar job in that we provide support for the manned and unmanned rocket launches, uh, supporting the uh, 45th Space Wing Command at Patrick Air Force Base and of course Kennedy Space Center with NASA. Typically we're eight to 10 STS launches a year and probably about 30 to 35 unmanned rocket launches and we have to go with the flow. We do sign up and, and uh, get reserves involved as early as possible for the manned launches, and of course the unmanned launches we do all with the station personnel. Since the support for shuttle launches is handled entirely by Coast Guard reservists, Station Port Canaveral gets really busy during the first few days leading up to and including the day of the launch. In order to have an uh, active duty contingent of 32 personnel designated for shuttle operations year round would not be cost effective. So they utilize reservists 32 per launch that come in four days prior to the launch. Uh, and we have it pretty systematically set up now that we, we come in, we know exactly where to go, the contacts in order to provide the logistics for each launch, uh, go ahead and set up, do the safety and security launch uh, goes, goes ahead and uh, occurs or stands down, and then we secure everything, all within uh, virtually a matter of hours. The Coast Guard is concerned about both safety, someone perhaps getting injured from falling debris, and security, protecting the space shuttle and the space shuttle crew. We've had a, a number of occasions where uh, boaters strayed into the launch danger area, uh, usually just to get a better shot of the launch, everybody's interested in watching it and everybody would like to be a little bit closer. And sometimes they stray just a little bit too close. That's what the safety zone is really set up for, is to keep people out from under any rocket during the launch where there could be some problem. Now obviously that doesn't happen very often, but if it did, we want to make sure that there are not people underneath the rocket and the chances of them being injured or their boat being damaged, you know, are the absolute minimum. The security zone is uh, from six miles north and south of the, the uh, launch azimuth as well as uh, out to three nautical miles. Uh, we will actually respond out to 60 nautical miles if there are no other means available to contact any vessels that might stray into that zone prior to launch. We'll go down and run both boats down Mesquite Lagoon and clear the area. And then we'll use auxiliary boats, two or three auxiliary boats in one of the RHIs and we'll establish a picket line across to keep anybody from going down. And then we'll take one of the boats and send it down a little ways just in case somebody slips through by some means or somebody comes from the beach and slips through, they can come up and intercept them before they get down too close to the pad. 
Right now we're headed about three miles off the launch pad, which is uh, about a 20 mile uh, trip from here. So it'll take us a couple hours to go there. We're required to be on station um, off the launch pad 12, 12 hours before the launch actually goes off. And our whole purpose is there is to uh, to keep boats out of that area um, while they're refueling and then actually when they uh, when they launch the, uh, the shuttle. Always prepare for the worst and hope it doesn't happen. There are situations where we've had specific launches with uh, certain payloads, uh, might relate to national security, it might be scientific in origin, uh, that has had the interest of a number of groups that are opposed to the launch and um, their desire has been to stop the launch. And of course, that's responsibility of our office is to keep those areas clear to make sure that launch can go on time and does achieve its uh, design mission. Station Port Canaveral takes on a whole new life in and around shuttle launches. Providing safety and security for all shuttle launches takes a lot of time and effort on the part of both station personnel and the 30 or so reservists assigned to the launch. Their on-site work begins three days prior to launch and gets more intense as concern for the timeliness of the launch itself heightens. We'll have uh, roving patrols for a certain period of time prior to launch and then we'll have continuous patrols in the area immediately adjacent to the launch pad to make sure that area is kept free of any traffic. Even before the sun comes up, the 41-footer heads out to take its position. At the Air Force's Range Operations Control Center, the Coast Guard team is monitoring the radar for possible safety and security area intruders. Security, security, hello all stations. This is United States Coast Guard Range Control, Cape Canaveral, Florida. United States Coast Guard Range Control, Cape Canaveral, Florida. For a local notice to mariners for the launch danger zone, switch to channel 22 Alpha. 157.1 megahertz. As the Coast Guard, the Air Force, NASA, and the astronauts go through their final pre-launch activities, crowds gather along the causeway, each person looking forward to catching a glimpse at the incredible sight. Kurt's got his, his helmet on now. Gene's just connected the part to his Snoopy cap for calm, and they tuck that in so it, it doesn't interfere with his ear. Configuration, switch guard removal per your checklist. Okay, go ahead, OTC. Okay, when you're ready, egress the crew module and verify ready for hatch closure. Okay, we're almost there. Everything is ready to go. You guys have a great mission, and we'll see you back here uh, at the conclusion of the mission. And NTD, you are clear to launch. Copy that, sir. Thank you. Go for OAA return. The access arms now being retracted away from the vehicle, back toward the launch tower. At exactly 10.41, the shuttle Discovery launches, right on schedule, without a hitch. One, booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery on a mission to study planet Earth. Even though nothing happened on this particular launch, no security or safety zone violations, it doesn't mean that the Coast Guard can relax and assume that every launch will go as smoothly.